you might want to take a step back here because this video on black on black crime is probably going to involve a couple of shots fired. <laughs> Okay, so that was a terribly cheesy lead-in for what's actually a very serious topic, black-on-black -black crime. I'd say that I'm sorry for the poor taste, but frankly, I'm really not. Let's just move on from it, shall we? Now, there was a recent shooting in Chicago, Illinois. Shocking, I know. And the target was allegedly a young black male who was working as a driver for hire. And had, he had just dropped off a pair of female passengers at a residence when he was confronted by two men who indicated that they had handguns. The man fled, uh, pursued by the two suspects, at which point the suspects opened fire on the fleeing target, missing him and striking Nikaya Aldridge in both the head and the arm. She died 45 minutes later in hospital. Now, when this was initially reported, I made an off-the-cuff remark about betting that the suspects were going to be relatively young, black, and male. And overall, that was, in all likelihood, another incident of black-on-black -black crime, that I've seen prominent figures in the black community proclaim that, oh, black-on-black -black crime doesn't exist. That's right. Just watch this clip of D.L. Hughley on Sway in the Morning, as published to Comedy Hype's YouTube account on July 16th, 2016. Every crime committed in the United States of America is two to one, black to white, white to black. They actually is more white on white crime than black on black crime. But when you call it black on black crime, that gives them marching orders. That right. gives them a call to arms. Mm -hmm. So now they can come and brutalize like, because there's a sense of urgency. You'll hear black people saying, oh, a black on black crime. That doesn't exist. Yeah, doesn't exist. Let's uh, keep on with the rest of the clip, though. It, it, if, if it exists, there has to be Asian on Asian crime yeah. or Latin on Latin crime. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Crime is about proximity. Mm -hmm. You hurt the ones you love because you're close to them. Mm hmm. If you take any any living organism and you put it in a small sp uh, space with limited resources, it will kill anything around it. Yeah. Possibly true, but if you look at this again, you're you're taking into account human behavior where we do have, you know, oh, I don't know what it's called. Oh yeah, higher reasoning. Black on black crime is nothing but it's biology. Mm -hmm. That shit is happening on your lawn right now with the weeds in the grass, mm -hmm. fighting for resources. Mm -hmm. But you believe that you're inferior because they tell you it's a such thing as black on black crime. You believe that you're inferior because they tell you there's such a thing as black on black crime. Yeah, let's let's move on with this. I understand what he's getting at with this statement in saying that black on black crime doesn't exist in any more or less a way than Asian-on-Asian Asian crime exists, or than white-on-white white crime exists. But he would be wrong. Verifiably incorrect. Now, I'm not the one to make such an assured affirmative claim uh, as that without proof, so if you were expecting a citation needed moment here, I must insist that you continue searching for such a thing. For reference, I would like to direct you to a couple of numbers as gathered by the FBI and other government organizations about homicide in the United States of America. First up, I would like to note that, according to the U.S. Department of Justice, that between the years of 1980 up to 2008, black individuals, quote, accounted for 52.5% of homicide offenders, end quote. In that same time period, taking key reference from 1980, 90, 2000, and 2010, black Americans made up, on average, 12.18% of the overall population. Now, just from those data points, we can put forth the statement that between the years of 1980 and 2008, that over half of the homicides in America were committed by a racial demographic that made up only 12.18% of the population. Let that sink in. Oh, and don't get me started on the math for if you factor in the disparity between the rates of homicide committed by men versus women. So as you can see, you're looking at 89.5% of homicides being committed by men between 1980 and 2008. So, in the same time period as black Americans committed 52.5% of homicides, men committed 89.5% of homicides. So we do a little bit of simple math here. Yeah, it can be reasonably presumed that 46.99%, so almost 47, of homicides between 1980 and 2008 were committed by black men. So, if you're going to make a prediction about a homicide wherein a black person was the victim, it is not out of bounds to presume that the perpetrator or perpetrators were also likely black. 
So in the first five minutes, we've established why black-on-black -black crime is a thing, or at least I would like to think I've done a decent job of establishing this. Um, I'd really like to wrap it up in the rest of the video and provide you with some concrete numbers and figures you can work from if somebody wants to question this assertion. And of course, all links will be provided in the description. Look, if you want the proof of black-on-black -black crime being an actual issue, you're going to want to look at these figures. I've already mentioned a number of these points, but I want to put them all in one place. One quick snippet, if I could. The black population of the United States as of 2010 was roughly 39.8 million people. From that figure, we find that this makes up 12.6% of the population. When you consider that 5,770 homicide offenders in 2010 were black, resulting in one murderer per 6,742 people from that racial group, there were 4,849 homicide offenders from the 223.6 million white U.S. citizens in the same year. For those of you not burning up the calculator buttons at home, that's one homicide offender per... Forty six thousand one hundred and twelve white Americans. That's one in six thousand seven hundred and forty two versus one in forty six thousand one hundred and twelve. So by the numbers, black on black crime is different and is more of a thing than white on white crime or any other single race on single race crime. Black Americans commit more murders per capita and overall and the same race offender percentage is 10% higher in the black population than it is in the white population. Blacks commit more homicide, they target their own race more frequently than other races do, and yet there are still voices who will cry out, black on black crime isn't a thing. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You are absolutely, entirely, demonstrably incorrect. But even still, people will claim that it isn't a thing in an attempt to prevent any introspection, to prevent any amount of self-awareness. And by doing this, they ensure that the problems will never be solved. It's a simple fact that if your racial group commits homicide both more often overall and more often per capita, that people, especially those in law enforcement who deal with violent criminals, are going to be more cautious or more on edge when dealing with your particular race. I'm sorry, but you're causing your own problems here in a great deal of the, uh, the instances. I'm not going to say that it's entirely your fault, because that would be completely disingenuous. But, you need to take control of what you can control. And in this case, if you stop committing so many homicides, you're going to be less likely to be seen as violent and dangerous, or more dangerous or violent than other groups. I want this problem to stop. Please don't mistake my motivations here. I want these needless homicides to stop. But the mainstream media isn't helping. And we need to keep calling out the real causes and not the end symptoms here. We need the truth and to address the truth, no matter how ugly it may be. Th that's all I've got here. I'm sorry to have to wrap this on such a low note. But that's it, folks. I'd like to take this opportunity, though, to do a little bit of uh, shilling, cyber shilling, if that's okay. I recently started a Patreon where you can help support me in my quest to keep creating new and better videos. There are multiple reward tiers for varying contribution levels, and I'm always open to suggestions for new rewards as well. To my patron, thank you so much. I hope you'll have more company coming soon. Aside from all this, have a good one, everybody. Try to cheer up a bit from this depressing topic. You have my very sincere apologies for possibly ruining your day.